Hi there, welcome to Noctis on YouTube. Before being officially operated, ships will first be tested to ensure whether they are fit for use or if there are any issues with their components. Generally, most shipping companies will directly test their designed ships in the ocean. However, the United States Navy is different as they have their own facility in the form of a very large room to test the feasibility of their ships. How can large ships be tested inside a room? The Navy's Maneuvering and Seakeeping Basin, commonly known as MASK, has been operating since 1962 and has tested all ships, platforms, and mooring systems in realistic sea conditions. This giant pool is 360 feet long, 240 feet wide, with a depth of up to 30 feet and can hold up to 12 million gallons of water. MASK itself is located inside the Naval Surface Warfare Center or NSWC in Carderock, Maryland. Various military and non-military ships have been tested in this giant pool, ranging from warships, submarines, to autonomous ships. Interestingly, the facility is able to mimic almost all ocean conditions in the world. However, the ships tested in this facility are actually small-scale models of Navy ships, but are considered as full-scale ships. The MASK facility was inspired by ship modeling testing and towing tanks, pioneered by William Frode, an English pioneer, naval engineer, and architect. Through years of experimentation, he created a formula now known as the Frode number. From this number, small-scale testing can be used to predict the behavior of full-sized ship hulls. For example, if MASK has a ship model 50 times smaller than the actual ship, using the Frode formula with a square root factor of 50, which results in about 7 times slower while taking recordings of the scale model and slowing them down, the result will look the same as what a full-sized ship would produce. Along the sides of the pool, there are long, thin rows of paddles protruding above the water's surface, sometimes moving like snakes. Amazingly, these arrays can create almost every type of wave that ships might commonly encounter at sea. The artificial waves in this giant pool can even knock down ship models ranging in size from 10 to 30 feet. To move the paddle arrays on this wave machine, electric motors and timing belts are needed to create wave heights or magnitudes like in the ocean. In 2013, the military began renovating MASK by replacing 21 rigid, slow, and less responsive pneumatic domes with 216 individually controllable paddles. The paddles installed at the edge of the pool are about 6 feet tall and 3 feet wide. With their long and slender size, these paddles can generate waves from various angles along the pool, mimicking irregular long and short waves. The waves in this pool can spread in any desired direction and can cover the pool or be localized in just one section. And with their sophistication, these paddles can even create whirlpools, which are most likely to occur at sea when strong tidal currents enter narrow straits. 
Additionally, this pool can also test ship models in shallow coastal conditions with waves reflecting from the shoreline. However, behind the prowess of the paddles that drive these waves, it's all thanks to the improved computer control from the previous one. Operators can design specific sea conditions and then program the computer to create them. Moreover, operators can also create 3D virtual models of the types of waves they want, even before a specific wave-making program is implemented. Although most ships are designed to operate in the middle of the ocean with salty water, MASK actually uses fresh water to fill its giant pool. The reason is quite simple yet beneficial. Seawater is denser and can cause corrosion faster than fresh water. The substances contained in salty seawater make MASK workers have to go the extra mile in maintaining and cleaning this giant pool. One of the operators at MASK stated that repetition is the key to accurate testing. The team at MASK routinely designs experiments and creates models and instruments for the testing phase. Fortunately, the system at MASK allows the same test to be run multiple times under the same conditions. This way, the testing team can gather more data and be confident in the results achieved. However, sometimes problems arise when the waves move and the water that bounces back creates hydrostatic pressure on the wave-making paddle arrays. But usually, sensors will immediately detect this back thrust. Moreover, computer algorithms determine how much energy is needed for these paddles. Thus, the paddles can continue to move at the right speed and frequency to accurately produce certain types of waves. In addition to sophisticated paddles and computer systems, this indoor ocean also includes two force transducers that track what's happening in the tank at a particular time when making waves. If there is a feedback to the computer, it indicates that the system can precisely control the waves and stop them exactly when desired. With these computer settings, the wave height in the pool can reach 3 feet for one big wave or 1 foot high for a pool full of waves. However, the tides in the wave pool are not actually scaled in a perfect ratio to real ocean waves. Nevertheless, the length can be directly increased or decreased. So, when using a hypothetical 10 to 1 scale, a 40-foot high wave at sea would be equivalent to a 4-foot high wave in MASK. There are two components that testers most often pay attention to, wave height or amplitude and frequency, which counts how often new waves arrive within a certain period of time. However, they cannot divide these numbers into a simple ratio when a test requires testing the effects of a real 3-foot high sea waves hitting a ship every 10 seconds. For example, in wave periodicity or how often it hits the ship's bow, it requires a square root calculation for that time period. Once the ship model and wave sizes have been determined, it's time to enter the testing phase in this artificial ocean. 
the testing begins long before a new ship type or ship modification is actually built. This testing phase also aims to closely examine how various parts of the ship perform in calm and rough conditions, including propellers, artillery, and other parts of the ship that experience resistance or water resistance, especially in wavy conditions. And if anything needs to be changed, the testers will immediately contact the shipbuilder and tell them what they need to change. Of course, this can prevent losses due to running out of funds in this project and, most importantly, minimize the risk of accidents. If it is appropriate, then the next stage is to build a full-scale ship model. Later, MASK will place instruments on the full-scale version to collect a lot of data then compare it with the previous small-scale ship model. This can help predict which design features are safe to keep and which ones need to be modified or discarded. In the end, the shipbuilder can proceed with modifications or build a new ship with confidence that safety and performance will not be compromised. Actually, not far from the MASK location, there is the David Taylor Model Basin Facility which houses one of the largest towing tanks in the world. Simply put, inside this facility, there is a towing tank or a long pool of water used to drag ship models while accurately measuring the force required to do so. These ship models are pulled by a towing carriage, which is a platform that moves on two rails and can move from one end to the other. To operate it, the ship model is mounted in the center of this moving platform and connected to the towing carriage. This towing carriage not only pulls the ship model, but also houses sensors and records data that will later be entered into the computer. Calm water resistance testing helps measure resistance strength. To find out, the ship model will be pulled down the tank at several specific speeds while sensitive sensors record the force experienced by the model for each speed. <laughs> 